Welcome fellow chemists to the 8th video on the reactions of alkenes where we take a look at the radical addition of hydrogen bromide. I suggest watching the radical reactions of alkenes first, then coming back. When we first encountered the addition of hydrogen bromide on alkenes, the regioselectivity favored tertiary over secondary over primary positions, so in this example the bromine lands on the secondary carbon. In a radical process, however, the regioselectivity is completely reversed. Let's investigate how this happens. Radical addition occurs in the presence of peroxide and begins when lighter heat breaks the oxygen-oxygen bond such that each oxygen atom retains one of the bonded electrons. What we have now is a pair of alkoxyl radicals. If one of them encounters the HBr, it causes the same thing to happen and the result is a bromine radical. While it is clearly a radical because of its unpaired electron, it is also an electrophile because it wants one more electron to complete its octet. We know that electrophiles add to the sp2 carbon with more hydrogens. This explains the regioselectivity of this process being the reverse of the HBr addition we encountered in the first video. As it approaches the alkene, the bromine radical treats the double bond similarly to how peroxide did HBr. It splits one of the two bonds evenly, takes one electron to form a bond with the less substituted carbon, and the other carbon retains the remaining electron. Remember the stability of radicals is similar to that of carbocations in that the higher the degree the more stable. In this case, secondary is as good as it gets, and since it is a radical and not a carbocation, we don't worry about rearrangements. If this alkyl radical encounters HBr, the same thing can happen in the hydrogen combined, resulting in our one bromopropane product. However, we have this bromine radical down here, so while the mechanism shown does indeed get us our product, it is not the entire story. The entire story of radical processes, which you would definitely know if you checked out the video I recommended earlier, involves three stages initiation, propagation, and termination. Unlike the halogenation of an alkane though, the radical addition of hydrogen bromide to propene has two initiation steps. First, peroxide is split into alkoxyl radicals. Then, one of the alkoxyl radicals reacts with hydrogen bromide to produce the bromine radical. During propagation, propene reacts with this bromine radical to produce an alkyl bromide radical. This alkyl bromide radical then reacts with hydrogen bromide to produce the expected bromoalkane product and another bromine radical. The hallmark of the propagation steps is that the radical at the beginning is produced again. Because this radical is produced again, both propagation steps can occur repeatedly, which is why this process may be called a radical chain reaction. Termination steps involve the reaction of two radicals. The first one involves bromine radicals forming bromine molecules. The second involves an alkyl bromide and bromine radical reacting to form 1,2-dibromopropane, the third is two alkyl bromide radicals producing 1,4-dibromo-2,3-dimethylbutane. Without radicals, it is tough for the radical reaction to continue, hence why these steps are referred to as termination. Now it is your turn to give it a go. With an example under your belt, write out all of the steps for the reaction on the screen. The initiation steps are the exact same as before. First, the peroxide breaks into two alkoxyl radicals, and then one of the alkoxyl radicals can split the hydrogen bromide, forming a bromine radical. The first propagation step involves the bromine radical reacting with the alkene. This forms the alkyl bromide radical. The other propagation step is when the alkyl bromide radical reacts with hydrogen bromide. This forms the expected product and leaves another bromine radical. Remember during propagation that the radical that started the first step should form by the end of the next. The simplest termination step is if two bromine radicals combine to form a bromine molecule. Another termination step is the alkyl bromide and bromine radicals reacting to form the dihalide product. The third termination step is if two alkyl bromide radicals react, forming an even larger dihalide product, which you would probably name 3,4-dibromomethyl-2,5-dimethylhexane. And honestly, that would be close enough. Don't worry about the name though, if you got all the initiation, propagation, and termination steps correct, then well done. The example and practice involve hydrogen bromide, so what if we use hydrogen chloride or hydrogen iodide? Give it a go with those halides and bute-1e. The product with hydrogen chloride is identical to the addition observed in the first video, and the same goes for hydrogen iodide. So what's going on? Well, I have not focused too much on the thermodynamics of any alkene reaction so far, and for time's sake I won't go into much detail now, but both radical HCl and HI additions are not favored so the peroxide has no effect on the process at all. However, as we have seen, radical hydrogen bromide addition is favored, 
so the peroxide has the effect of reversing the expected product. For more details, click the link above, but if you want me to make a video about it, leave a comment below. In summary, the radical addition of hydrogen bromide results in an alkyl bromide product. However, the location of the bromine favors primary over secondary over tertiary positions. The overall process involves initiation steps where the peroxide forms alkoxyl radicals, which in turn form bromine radicals. During propagation, bromine radicals can react with the alkene to form the alkyl bromide radical. The alkyl bromide radical can then react with the hydrogen bromide to form the expected product. Termination steps involve the reaction of two radicals, with the simplest being bromine radicals combining to form bromine molecules. Another is when the alkyl bromide and bromine radicals react to form the dihalide product. Finally, if two alkyl bromide radicals react, we get an even larger dihalide product. Coming up, we are going to conclude this alkene reaction series with hydrogenation. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe as I have more in development. Check out these previous videos to compare and contrast the process you just learned. As usual, feel free to get in touch with me via email, social media, or if you would like, make a request in the comments.